I hope you had a really wonderful uh, first, really full-packed morning. And now we're really, really, really excited to have three brief keynotes and then a wonderful new attack panel and an energy and space panel. So stay put for that. First one, I want to welcome up uh, on stage Robert Cargill. Thank you so, so much for sponsoring you guys. And with, uh, without further ado, the stage is yours. So again, I'm Robert Cargill. I'm a venture partner uh, with Quadroscope Venture Fund. Uh, I'm joined today by Jose Navarro. I don't know if he's out there. If you are, um, I guess he's still maybe down having lunch. Um, I also wanted to briefly mention Fiona Miller, our general par partner and manager of the fund. Um, she's a sponsor of this event, uh, and it's through her generosity that, that we're here today. Um, I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of a chat about why we're so optimistic about the future prospects for health, health span extension. And just a brief disclaimer, we're, uh, we're not offering securities here. <laughs> Although we can, just not here. Um, there's been a great deal of press lately about the wealthy and powerful expending vast sums of money trying to preserve their own health. And this is nothing new. Throughout history, there have been um, thousands and thousands of years of examples of wealthy, powerful leaders trying to preserve their own carcasses. And um, you, you, from the tales of Gilgamesh 4,000 years ago to pursuit of the fountain of youth and um, things like young blood for aging popes. One thing they all have in common, though, is that they were all spectacularly unsuccessful. So why is it that we would now be optimistic about the prospects to actually increase our healthy lifespan? To quote Thomas Dolby, science. There are now decades of Nobel Prize winning discoveries that uh, have come in the fields of immunology and cancer, uh, also telomeres and epigenetic reprogramming. I mean, we're, we're, we're tapping the power of the developing embryo to restore and maintain good health for us aging folks. We also have a molecular level understanding of biological processes. Uh, so this eye chart is something that if, if you're actually interested in getting a copy of yourself, it's on the Roche website. Um, there's a companion chart they have too. But arrayed against all this knowledge, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of diseases that are all conspiring to take away our vitality and to put us in the grave. Just because we have this blueprint, it doesn't mean that we know how to fix these things. I mean, you could give me the, the blueprint to a Tesla, you probably don't want me working on your car tomorrow. So for a strategy, we turn to Aubrey de Grey, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for, um, for comprising a, developing a list, a systematic classification of all the ways in which aging biological organisms fail. Um, he, he proposed seven deadly things. Um, these include things like the loss of beneficial stem cells, the accumulation of counterproductive senescent cells and cancerous cells, the loss of bioenergetic capacity with aging, and just the general accumulation of intracellular and extracellular garbage. So his idea was that if we target these basic fundamental aging processes and target ways to repair the damage, we might be able to actually slow down or reverse the development of this vast array of age-related diseases. There's another group uh, that published a paper in 2013, Serrano Group. Um, they, interesting, they um, develop, developed a similar classification system. Um, they added a pretty picture and um, borrowed from oncology to call it the hallmarks of aging. And it was as though critical mass had been attained and all of a sudden there were, there were papers flying left and right discussing the hallmarks of aging. It served as the foundation for, um, for thousands and thousands of papers and millions of man hours of effort expended directed at these basic fundamental processes of aging. 
So the answer to the question of how we attack this hydra of diseases is instead of approaching each one of them individually, we approach the fundamental processes of aging. And now, with that approach, we could if we come up with a good therapy for something like reversing cellular senescence, we might treat not just one or two diseases, but the entire body of age-related diseases. And that's the essence of a longevity biotech or long bio company. So these are companies that are targeting fundamental, disease, fundamental processes of aging in order to treat aging and age-related disease. There are dozens, even hundreds, of these companies that have now, um, that have now been developed. Um, there, I, I don't know if Carl Fleck, if Carl's in the audience here, his website, Aging Biotech Info, has an excellent compilation of the many, many companies in the space. Quadroscope happens to be an investor in several of these, um, so I thought I would mention that. And um, a, a brief introduction to just a couple of the ones uh, in our portfolio. We're investors in deciduous therapeutics. Um, deciduous is developing strategies to encourage natural killer cells to give them a greater ability to clear senescent cells that have accumulated in aging. Uh, Nanotics, who's run by Lou Hawthorne, who is out here in the audience. Um, Lou and company are working on nanoparticles that are able to trap inflammatory cytokines. Uh, and I'm sure there's many, many more things that they'll be able to do with this interesting platform technology. There's also um, Turn.bio. Um, Turn.bio turn is working on strategies for using epigenetic reprogramming to treat skin aging and also to make CAR T cell therapy more effective. And last one I'll mention is BioChange. Um, one of the hallmarks that should have been on that, the previous slide about hallmarks that isn't there yet is accumulating damage in the extracellular matrix. And BioChange is working on scaffolds that encourage um, encourage engraftment of stem cells and the regrowth of tissues for dental applications. And they're actually starting out in pets. So they, they should be able to get to revenue fairly soon. So all in all, from an investment standpoint, this also presents a huge opportunity financially. Um, aging and age-related diseases cost many trillions of dollars. Um, we, we spend over $4 trillion a year in the United States, so even the slightest reduction in the onset of these diseases stands to offer us hundreds of billions of dollars in cost savings. We think that many of the companies that I've shown on the previous slides will be the beneficiaries of some portion of that. Um, before closing, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that, is that Quadroscope is very interested in biomarkers. Uh, we are sponsors of the Biomarker Aging Consortium, and um, we, uh, we're very interested in the development of tools that allow individuals to, um, to continuously monitor the state of their body, uh, monitor their personal aging progression. And that's the only way that you and I are going to be able to test out different therapies and see what actually works for us. So we think this is critical and essential component of this community. So with that, um, if you have an interest in what we're doing, uh, interest in the companies, or if you have a company that you think would be a good fit for us, um, please come see me or Jose uh, at the conclusion of this and join us and invest in extending healthy lifespans. Thank you.